They can't wait to shoot people, which leads me to the biggest culprits of all, the Rittenhouse fans. Hello? Supporters. Apparently there was definitely a knife, uh, and so that's much He's not gonna say that's much worse than the skateboard, right? When there's, I didn't believe there was any evidence whatsoever of this knife ever being pulled. Worse than a skateboard. Yeah. I. After this video, we're gonna watch how they cover the Jacob Blake one. Cops in Wisconsin shot a black man several times in the back as he calmly walked into his own vehicle, his three children. To be fair, the video does look bad. But to be fairer, this is why I always say, wait for the full video, guys. The Young Turks Rittenhouse. What was their stance, I guess, on the Rittenhouse shit? Kyle Rittenhouse has been found not guilty in the shooting and killing of two men and the attempted killing of a third uh, by a Wisconsin jury after four days and over 25 hours of deliberations. Uh, the panel also cleared him of attempted intentional homicide for severely wounding Gage Grosskreutz, a 27 year old paramedic from suburban Milwaukee who was there that night volunteering his medical services. Uh, Rittenhouse was also acquitted on two counts of recklessly endangering safety. I mean, they, they say there that he's a paramedic, but he wasn't holding an assault rifle, so he doesn't seem like an authentic medic in this context. In the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. So bearing in mind that uh, previously they had gotten some sort of length technicality that got rid of the uh, weapons charge. Uh, from the perspective of our judicial system, uh, he did absolutely nothing wrong. Don't get into his motives, his actions were perfect. He shouldn't have made any different choices. Everything he did is fine. And that is unfortunately, I think, the lesson that some individuals are going to take away from this. If you had had an interest in grabbing a gun and going somewhere and ending up in some sort of situation, well, you can now be assured on two things. You already knew that you'd be able to raise millions of dollars to crowdsource your defense. You'd become a celebrity on the right. And now you've been told by the state that that it's probably totally fine legally too. The incentives that this is providing for more potential vigilantes, and Fox News is doing everything they can every day to encourage more people to do this, is that you do not have to fear legal consequences. Yeah. Wow. There are at least two different issues here, and we'll have to talk through both of them at a minimum. I think there's a bunch of other peripheral issues like the world's worst mom. So I wanna get back to that later. But the two issues are, did the jury uh, rule correctly? Uh, and should he have been convicted? Should he have been acquitted in the case as a matter of law? Uh, and Morgan, I'm curious about your thoughts on that in a second as well. Uh, and then the second issue is, is what he did okay? Okay, now, if uh, I don't think that it's quite sending the message that, that John said from a legal perspective. Uh, I don't, when if someone is uh, not proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, that doesn't, mean that the state is saying what they did was okay. So OJ Simpson was also acquitted because uh, they could not prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, it's kind of saying that, right? I would agree with you generally that not guilty just means the state saying there's not enough evidence to convict you of, of that. But I feel like if you're using an affirmative defense, the state is, because you are admitting basically, I did kill some people, which is a crime. And the state's saying, okay, well, you know, you did do a bad thing, but we think it was okay for a reason, right? Isn't that, couldn't you argue with with an affirmative defense, the state kind of is saying what you did was okay? Out that he did it, uh, it doesn't mean the state of California thought that it was great what OJ Simpson might have done, okay? I think he did it, uh, and and in the case of in the house, just because he gets a, uh, acquitted does not mean the state thinks it was hunky-dory, they just couldn't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. But why did they, um, uh, ruled the way that they did. Well, we told you all along it was a tough case uh, as we were covering it because, first of all, the legal standard is really important, guys. And, and we didn't get this completely right throughout, and I wanna clarify it here. Most states say that when you go to a self-defense argument as Rittenhouse did, the burden of proof then shifts, and uh, you've gotta prove an affirmative case of self-defense. That is oh, not correct. the case in Wisconsin, which greatly helps Rittenhouse and Wait. makes this ruling even more understandable from a legal perspective. Uh, in Wisconsin, you still have to disprove self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt, which makes it much harder. Now, in the case of, of the first uh, person that he shot- Wait, what? Uh, it was Rosenbaum who had thrown a plastic bag at him, but someone had shot nearby. 
Hold on, I'm sorry. I need to re-listen to that again. Okay. Ruling even more understand we've got to prove an affirmative case of self-defense. That is not the case in Wisconsin, which greatly helps Rittenhouse and makes this ruling even more understandable from a legal perspective. In Wisconsin, you still have to disprove self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt, which makes it much harder. Now, in the case of, of the first person that he shot, it was Rosenbaum who had thrown a plastic bag at him, but someone had shot nearby, he heard the gun. You still have to disprove self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt. Um. Yeah, isn't that always the case? If somebody claims, um, if somebody claims any sort of defense, or if somebody claims a um, affirmative defense, whatever you're charging them with, you would still have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, right? Or am I misunderstanding something? Now, in the case of, of the first uh, person that he shot, uh, it was Rosenbaum who had thrown a plastic bag at him, but someone had shot nearby. He heard the gun sound, then he apparently thought something was being thrown at him, he kills. Self-defense is not always an affirmative defense, it is a defense in certain jurisdictions. Affirmative versus negating defense. In whole or in part by... Affirmative defense is one, oh, hold on. Justification of the defendant having committed the accused crime. It differs from other defenses because the defendant admits that he did, in fact, break the law. He's simply arguing there's a good reason for doing so. Defense only when they have basically conceded that the prosecution should prove all the elements of a crime. Vigorous disputing of the prosecution's chief. Maybe, I don't The defendant must offer proof at trial supporting the affirmative defense, meeting the standard of proof set by the state. Okay. Negative. Unlike a negative defense, an affirmative defense one that I miss. Wait, so Wisconsin self defense, a negative defense? Destiny, the distinction is almost meaningless in practice. Yeah, because my understanding, I mean, we watched the whole court case, is Rittenhouse is. Rittenhouse's lawyers essentially had to prove that they felt he acted in self-defense, right? It's not like they just said self-defense and then sat back and let other people try to prove that it wasn't or something, no? To overcome privilege of parental discipline in sub. The state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the only one of the following is not met. The use of force must be reasonably necessary. The amount and nature of the force used to the force used must not be known to cause or create a potential risk of grave bodily harm or death. This is reasonably necessary. The amount and nature of the force used must be reasonable. Okay. Okay, I don't think this matters that much, but. To disprove self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt, which makes it much harder. Now, in the case of, of the first uh, person that he shot, uh, it was Rosenbaum who had thrown a plastic bag at him, but someone had shot nearby. He heard the gun sound, then he uh, apparently thought something was being thrown at him. He kills uh, the first guy. The second guy hit him with a skateboard. Now, I wouldn't kill anyone if they hit me with a skateboard, but I know the right wing. They're very fragile, very weak. And so they think, if you look at me kind of wrong, I'm afraid for my life and I'll murder you. But in the case of the law- I can't understand if it's, um, I can't understand if it's, cause Cenk is a big guy. I don't know if it's Hollywood movies or if it's, I just can't understand it. Um, an adult male punching you in the face as hard as he can is likely gonna cause some damage, right? Do we all agree with that? 
Um, an adult male with a skateboard smashing that in your face as hard as he can is almost certainly going to cause some damage. Um, Rittenhouse was, what, a 17-year-old boy at the time? Like, it just, that just seems like such an, un that just seems like such a weird thing to say. Oh, and the, and the jury here, I, I don't think the jury is the issue. I don't think that, that this was an atrocious ruling. Uh, I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, because they're put in a situation where one guy, you know, they have to say beyond a reasonable doubt, that he did not act in self-defense. I think the the real issue is as a matter of precedent in the in the country, do we want people walking around with weapons provoking people and then as soon as they're threatened in any way start to kill people because but if he this didn't is provoke the them, though. if he is pro Russian tomorrow we are now in, in the country. process of defeating so, but the radical move on to that topic. Morgan, Marxists, what do you think about the legal the world? anarchists the agitators, yeah, I mean, the looters, and people who in many instances have absolutely no clue what they are doing. Obama. Oh, I can wear this at level 20? Based. We're going to have massive vigilante violence in this country. So, but before I move on to that topic. Massive vigilante. Oh, this was a year ago and it just didn't happen. So. Morgan, what do you think about the legal rule? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right in the sense that we have now put laws on the books all over this country that do green light exactly what you're saying, vigilante justice. We have individuals that are serving as- None of this was vigilante justice. Self-defense is not vigilante justice. Bitch. Baby, baby, mom. the jury executioner all in one based on some kind of feeling that they're having. And so that's not exactly the jury's fault. That's a that's a problem of our legal system. And these types of inconsistencies, one, are what continue to breed extreme distrust of our justice system. But then also, yeah, I think this is a scary moment where we continue to unleash people who believe that they can take matters into their own hands based on their individual impression of any given perceived threat of danger. That's really, really scary. Yeah. I I mean, that is self-defense in the United the implications States, right? Of this far more than the individual details of the particular case, but there's just, this leaves us with a thousand interesting questions. So if, like if it's just self-defense in the first case, so someone shoots nearby, so he gets to kill someone nearby. So you can just carry a gun and anytime you hear a loud noise, you get to shoot someone. Like that, that's, that's in. Wait, what? What a, what a weird framing of that. Saying you should have to prove that there was a good re and then after he shoots the first person anyone else nearby with a gun would have presumably heard that shot so they get to shoot someone that's standing near them too this is insane and the, one of the most frustrating things uh, for me about the right-wing response is many of them will immediately say well it's, it's self-defense it's law you are not allowed to express any issue with the way self-defense is defi defined generally in this individual state, the way that it's adjudicated, who generally gets to use that defense. Um, and we're just supposed to take it as given. We're supposed to just accept that the law as written is obviously right. It's not designed nor in effect does it have particular outcomes. And we're being told this, I tweeted something to this effect earlier, by people who've spent the last half century trying to strip, strip away women's reproductive rights. They've never just complied with the law and thought, well, if it's the law, then we can never question it whatsoever. We can never uh, wonder if it should be the way it is. And here, it's just the law. Everyone shut up and let's only focus on the last 30 seconds. Okay. So anything before 30 seconds before he started killing people, you can't question. So you can't show him talking on video about how he'd like to kill someone. You can't wonder why he would bring a gun to this sort of situation. Why did he have to be there in the first place? What media had he been consuming that was encouraging these sorts of vigilante things? You should only pay attention to the three or four seconds before the shot and that's it. Well, I'm sorry, I can't be so uh, idiotic as that. I have to wonder what went into it, what decisions were made, and whether it's the law in Wisconsin that you should consider that or not, I think we should. And I would say, by the way, they generally don't want you to think about any of this stuff, and yet they've all settled on this bizarre, not even legal argument, because they'll never be explicit about it, that you should not be bothered by the murders because, hey, it turned out uh, one or two of the people he shot had done bad things. 
Never mind that he didn't know about that. Never mind that even if he did, he doesn't get to just execute bad people when he comes across them on the street. But they think the motivations of the people who died should go into our evaluation of this, but not the motivations of the guy who took a gun he never should have had across state lines and went to this pro- Wait, hold on. The motivations of the people who died? Wait, the guy being a child porn or child molester or whatever, none of that was brought up during the trial, was it? Am I crazy? Protest. All of that is worthy of uh, at least a discussion and possibly legal reform, I think. So now let me fully agree with John on the societal points at, at, at play here. So first of all, guys, um, think about the, uh, one of the points that John just made. So it's self-defense, if you hear a gunshot, you could just turn around and shoot someone. Well then under that theory, someone nearby could have shot Rittenhouse and said, well, I heard a gunshot. And he had a gun, so the I mean, yeah, it's not like the state, I don't think the state tried to press charges against um, Grosskurtz was the one who ran up and aimed a deadly weapon at him, right? But I don't think he got in trouble for that. So yeah, that's true. And nobody, and he wasn't charged for that. So nobody disagrees. Rosenbaum didn't have a gun, he had a, at that point he didn't even have a plastic bag, he'd already thrown it. Yeah. So he had no weapon at all and a jury just ruled it's self defense to shoot that unarmed man and kill him, okay? Because you heard a gunshot. Well, you, a lot of people heard Rittenhouse's gunshot. Could they have just executed him on the spot? Just, and, and the answer can is I not? yes, according to- Wait, hold on, can, can I no longer salvage this item? What am I supposed to do with it? What does the melody in the beginning remind you of? It feels Zelda-esque. It almost sounds like the um, the fairy fountain theme. I don't know if it is the same collaboration. It almost sounds like that. Is it the same movement? It might be, I'm not sure. That's what it reminds me of, if you're thinking Zelda. Um, I must admit I am not too familiar with this defense, uh, but it looks like it says that a person is allowed to use self-defense, but not excessively. And you're only allowed to use deadly force as self-defense if you have reasonable belief that someone's gonna use deadly force on you. Is this correct? I, Wisconsin self-defense, is an affirmative defense. So the defense has- Wait, okay, hold on. Who was everybody telling me in the past it was way different here, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it, all the reading we did in the, earlier seemed pointless. So it is affirmative defense in Wisconsin. Wait, where are these motherfuckers in chat? ...to produce evidence that if believed would come within the self-defense um, defense. Okay. Jenk, there was a, um, a New York Times article with this headline. This was 12 days ago. Okay, wait, let's finish this, sorry. The ruling we just had, if you hear a gunshot. Now, what if the person you're shooting is a cop? What if you, you heard a cop shooting, but you didn't bother looking and you just turn around just like Rittenhouse did? Hold on, haven't there been people that have killed cops before for like breaking an entry and they, and they got off? I feel like this happened in the last year or two. Where somebody shot and killed a cop, but it was okay because it was a self-defense thing. Why? It's always crazy. Like, people will say like, well, now that we've said that this happened, what if this or this? And then like all those other things have happened, right? Like, yeah, true. Brianna Taylor's boyfriend shot at cops and he wasn't charged. You just turn around, boom, execute the cop. Well, you heard a gunshot. That's self-defense. Okay, and guys, the skateboard, it's insanity. The one good job that the prosecution did was it was in the closing argument when they said, does anyone else have a right to self-defense? Or is only the person with the weapon allowed self-defense? Well, one of them had a gun, so presumably only the person with the biggest gun has a right to self-defense. Yeah, so did that guy have a right to self-defense as Rittenhouse was literally shooting him, right? Then the guy with the skateboard. Probably. I don't think anybody would have faulted him. I don't think he would have been charged for shooting back. Or I mean like. Did he have a right to defend himself from, he heard shots, right? Just like Rittenhouse did. They say you, Rittenhouse can kill someone if he heard shots. Brianna Taylor's boyfriend is locked up right now. He got 12 years. Wait, what? 
I'm pretty sure he wasn't charged at all. Are you talking about her ex-boyfriend who was like a drug dealer or something, or? Brianna Taylor's boyfriend wins $2 million settlement. He has been trolling, gotcha. Oh, he's Parma Van now. Okay. Shots. Well, Huber heard shots and he was defending himself with a skateboard. So does he have no rights at all? Does that mean as a society now, and the gun manufacturers are gonna be thrilled with this decision. Mm -hmm. Does that mean as a society now, we all have to be super heavily armed, otherwise we lose the right to self-defense and we could be killed at any time. This just became an incredibly scary country. Yeah. If it wasn't already very what? scary to begin with, with Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman, and countless other cases, Morgan. Well, yeah, and, and just you know, a lot of the names that are coming to mind for me as we're looking at what are our laws on the books, what are we allowing, what do certain laws open the, the gateway to? I mean, Tamir Rice, Tyron King, Henry Green, people who have been killed in Ohio um, in, in interactions with law enforcement that were that have also been justified to an extent by the laws on the books. And what is the end result of this? It is chaos. We are living through chaos, and that is no way to run a country. And but it is oh exactly God, the plan of people who profit off of yeah. that chaos. What, is, what what does George Floyd even have to do with this? <laughs> why, why why are we even drawing pictures of this? Like. Okay, the, yeah, go ahead, John. Uh, the, the way that I forget who put it this way, but the way I read it was, uh, the last person alive is innocent. That's what it is. You better be the last person alive, and then you were the one defending yourself. Everything else is just collateral damage uh, along that path. Well, John, let me agree further with you. So everybody saw Rittenhouse crying on the stand, and everybody wondered, is it real, is it fake, etc. But there was a lot of people had sympathy for, oh my God, the poor kid. Well, how about Huber? So he never got to cry on the stand, because he was murdered. Or now killed, officially killed, not murdered. And mm -hmm. so you never got to see him crying. You never got to see him do anything. He was killed as a young man in the streets because a maniac was running around with an AR-15 shooting anything that he perceived to be a threat. <laughs> I, Rittenhouse was like the perfect litmus test for like how fucking insane you are, I think. I think Rittenhouse was the, it was the go-to. I feel like my debate with Chang is not going to be very productive, but I guess we'll see. After he started uh, going in there, in my opinion, with the confrontation of bringing in weapons to a protest in the first place, right? So now that leads us to two other things. Um, just let me dispense with this real quick. The mom is the world's worst parent. She drove a 17 year old with an AR-15 into what she perceived to be a dangerous riot. Oh, you want to go into it in the middle of a dangerous riot, my 17-year-old son? Here, I'll drive you across state lines to do it. Oh, here's an AR-15. <laughs> across state So lines. in case a butterfly floats by, you just murder everyone, okay? I'm sorry, kill everyone, mm -hmm. okay? She is a despicable parent. Yeah. No sane parent would ever do that. But the right wing in this country is crazed. They're crazed. They can't wait to shoot people, which leads me to the biggest culprits of all, the Rittenhouse Fans Hello? or supporters includes all of them, all of the the Alex Jones, the Tim Pools, the uh, Joe Rogans, the millions of crazed Rambo wannabe right wingers in this country who are like, oh yeah, yeah why don't I just bring weapons? Oh, oh, oh self defense, murder, 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 murder. They just want to kill. <laughs> Bro. So they go into the middle of protests with these goddamn weapons, looking to pick a fight, and then the minute Rittenhouse actually shoots these people. They're ecstatic. They love that he killed them. They love that he killed them. That's why they're his fans. What is there to be a fan of? If the shoe's on the other foot and some guy goes into the middle of a right wing protest with an AR-15 and he's progressive. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, well, I was, they provoked me. Somebody threw a plastic bag, the other one in the game, was skateboard, so I killed him. I don't become a fan of that guy. Yeah. I don't become a fan of that guy. I say that's insane to go in the middle of a protest with an AR-15. What's the name of the guy that shot and killed the Trump guy and then was later killed at his house by the FBI? I really want to see their coverage of that guy. Looking to pick a fight so you can kill people. But the right wing in this country is steeped in violence. They're soaked in blood and they can't wait to kill. 
So guys, America, I hate to say it because I love this country. But America has now become a super scary place where people are constantly killing each other and getting <laughs> away with it. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's by the way, it's convenient for the right uh, because look, just, just today, you will be thinking about this and not about the fact that the House packed, uh, passed Build Back Better. So the fact that you might save $1,000 a month on insulin, they don't want you thinking about that sort of thing because it might lead you to believe that the government can make your life better, that perhaps it owes you something. And generally, you should be terrified. You should be terrified. We're gonna tell you all the people you should be scared of so that you will never ever again think about your economic situation, how the government has failed you and why, who it's actually serving. They love the focus on all of this stuff. They scare people like Kyle Rittenhouse constantly with their nonsense and then use the murders of people like him to scare you further. Now we're gonna be talking about both because we have an obligation to. We believe that there is some sort of ethical obligation when you're involved in journalism, um, but they don't. They love the idea that you will just constantly be lusting for blood, terrified, Jesus jealous, suspicious. Christ. That's what they want. They turn people into these crazed, bloodthirsty, terrified individuals knowing that th that sort of population is never gonna pose any sort of risk to the most powerful and wealthy people in this country. Well, that's Morgan. the exact dynamic we have here in Ohio. I mean, on the other side of this <laughs> Republican Senate, on the Republican side of the Senate race, J.D. Vance, Josh Mandel, I mean, these are people that are just stoking the fire of this hatred and violence and suspicion of people around you and using it for their own political gain. So, I mean, that's the stakes of things in Ohio. We have a lot of these same types of laws on the books and it is it is a scary time and why you know the Senate race is so important. Thanks for watching the Young Turks, I really appreciate it. All right, let's get this. Michael Forrest Rynell, the Portland man who uh, admitted he was responsible for the fatal shooting of a right-wing radical during a night of clashes with Trump supporters, uh, was killed by cops. Even the framing of this is so unbelievable. This might be, I'm sorry, I haven't watched the Young Turks in a long time. I feel like I said that they were like kind of center leftish. Have I said that about the Young Turks before? Or did I say they're far left? This coverage is about as unhinged as what I would expect to hear on the majority report. A right-wing radical. I don't think the guy knew that. I think he just walked up to the street and shot and killed him. As they attempted to apprehend him, uh, this is based on what uh, the authorities are alleging happened. We don't have too many details, but this has to do with the suspect who uh, shot and killed Aaron Danielson, a member of Patriot Prayer. Now, the U.S. Marshal said a task force was attempting to arrest Michael Forrest uh, right now in Washington State. Um, he was wanted for this charge of murder. Now, the initial reports indicated or indicate the suspect produced a firearm, so they're alleging that he uh, had a weapon on him, threatening the lives of law enforcement officers. Task force members responded to the threat and struck the suspect who was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, as this was happening, as the authorities were attempting to apprehend him, Vice actually aired an interview with Rynell. He He agreed to speak to the press and he did confess to uh, shooting uh, Aaron Danielson, but says that he did it in an act of self-defense because Danielson was attacking him and a friend with a knife. Now we do know uh, based on local reporting at the time uh, that Danielson did in fact have a knife on him and he also did have a paintball gun. Um, so there is some evidence corroborating that, but without further ado, uh, here is Michael Wright. Uh, we watched the videos. Wait, I'm sorry, can somebody link the, we can just watch the videos. There's a video of him crossing the street, I think, to do it. This guy here, um, Reinhold, he came from across the street over there. There's another angle of this. I don't know if it's gonna be included in this or not, but. I think, um, I think the Patriot Prayer guy started to mace the guys he was in front of him, I believe. Was the guy defending himself or was it a random killing after an argument? Um, I, I, I thought they'd argued sometime earlier, and then I think the Reinhold guy, I think he stalks this Patriot Prayer guy. He's like following him from across the street, and then he crosses, and then I think they say some words, and then he shoots and kills him after the Patriot Prayer guy takes out a thing to mace him. I think. Didn't that guy wait near a garage for the Trump supporter to pass and then ran up him? Um, yeah, I'm, I just remember him being across the street. Or you can see him crossing him across the street, yeah. Now speaking to the press and explaining why he decided to open fire, killing Aaron Danielson. I had no choice. I had a choice. I could have sat there and watched them kill a friend of mine of color. 
But I wasn't gonna do that. You know, that, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. My name is Michael Forrest Rynell, born and raised in Portland, Oregon, 48 years old. You know, lots of lawyers suggest- I wonder if they're just gonna uncritically air this piece and not actually comment on it at all. No shot would they do this. That I shouldn't even be saying anything, but I feel it's important that the world at least gets a little bit of what's really going on because there's been a lot of propaganda put out there. Um, what I will say is that I felt that my life and other people around me's lives were in danger. And I felt like I had Source. no choice but to do what I did. So before the authorities uh, shot and killed him, uh, he had also mentioned to the press that he is not a member of Antifa, despite the fact that was widely reported. Uh, he did describe himself as 100% anti-fascist, but never said that he was 100% uh, Antifa, which was something that was originally alleged. Cenk. Okay, hold on, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't that essentially make you Antifa? It's not like Antifa is an actual organization or something with like a leadership structure and hierarchy right and people just like, that's like saying you're part of like blm no like it's not like BLM, i mean there is an org called blm but you don't have to be part of blm to call yourself blm like yeah so first of all rhino uh should not have gone there with a weapon uh like kyle rittenhouse put the weapons away don't go in the middle oh good job chank okay hey you know what Props. He started off better than I thought he would. Let's see where we go from here. Of uh, heated, passionate situations with guns, because then people will use them. And soon, both sides will be using them. Well, they're already both sides using them. What I'm worried about is both sides using them at, at the same time. So this is this has got disaster written all over it. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, in a little bit later, give you some quotes of his where he, he did talk about uh, potentially using force. Now, uh, having said that, Kyle Rittenhouse defenders say, well, you know, he was hit with a skateboard after he shot someone else in the head. So he had every right to kill the guy who was trying to uh, apprehend him or stop him from killing anyone else. Self-defense, self-defense, right? Um, well, in this case, apparently there was definitely a knife. Uh, and so that's much. He's not going to say that's much worse than the skateboard, right? When there's, I didn't believe there was any evidence whatsoever of this knife ever being pulled. Worse than a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm late every day. I'm late every day to the stream because I'm pre-watching every video on the internet, guys. I'm late on, I'm late every single day because I'm pre-watching all the videos. That's why I'm not, on, that's why I'm not streaming at noon, guys. I got to watch everything in advance. I gotta watch everything in advance. So definitely self-defense. So all right-wingers agree, right? Self-defense, because you just said it about Rittenhouse. And in this case, it appears to be a, a, a more significant case of self-defense. So you're all on Reinhold's side, right? Oh, you're not, that's so weird. See, I'm consistent on it. Both of them should not, both the right-winger and the left-winger should not have gone with weapons, and they should not have used those weapons. Uh, and But the right-wing will say, oh, when the right-wing does it, at the slightest, provocation or oh, after after Rittenhouse shoots someone in the head and someone chases him down ah, he's being chased down after shooting someone in the now oh my god we're gonna do the trifecta because after this video we're gonna watch how they cover the Jacob Blake one. Oh my god <laughs> oh no and self-defense not guilty the other guy oh there's a knife and he might have killed someone no not self-defense why I don't know he's left wing like it doesn't require rationale so now let's look at the cops and uh, whether they were uh, consistent or not. Um, so uh, Rittenhouse uh, goes and murders two people and shoots three and walks up to the cops with his uh, assault weapon. Illegal weapon. weapon. Yeah, a illegal assault weapon. Wow. Hanging out. Cops are like, hey, how you doing? They walk him, let him walk right up to their car. Okay, if he's black, he's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Oh my God. Hold on, are they gonna try to say that Rittenhouse, who turned himself in immediately afterwards, is gonna be, is good, it was worse than this guy who ran to his house, gave interviews to Vice Media, and then holed up there while the FBI came to his, like, seriously? 
walking up to a cop car with an assault weapon. Dead, dead, no question about it. Rittenhouse saunters up after, after killing two people. So the cops, cops are like, hey, how you doing? And then they let him go. Now, and they didn't have an idea what happened. Right uh, the cops chase him down uh, a couple of days later. Uh, now, this is super important. Every right winger online is lying. Uh, every one of them is like, oh, he shot at the cops. He shot at the cops. What are you going to do? He shot at the cops. Of course they had to murder him. No, that's not true. According to the latest reporting, here's CNN. Initial reports indicate that the suspect produced a firearm. They say it's not known if Ryan Ole fired at the officers. Okay, so believe me, if he'd fired at the officers, the first thing the cops would have said is, he fired at us, we had to kill him. He fired at us, uh, murderer, terrorist, right? If the cops aren't saying he fired at him, there's a 200% chance that he didn't fire at them. So, oh, he's running away and he produced a firearm. Yeah, let's just kill him. And so, do I trust the cops that they were under threat? No, I don't. Uh, the cops are always on the right wing side. The cops are always against black people and always against the left wing in nearly every instance that we've covered. Okay. So, oh, trust cops on blind faith. You must be nuts. And look at the fact patterns here. One guy, oh yeah, you wanna come right up to us with an assault weapon. Oh, you're a right winger and you just murdered left wingers. Who cares? Come on up, buddy. Oh, oh, you told us. Oh, that's okay, go home. The other guy, oh, he might be running away and he produced the firearm. He didn't shoot it or anything. He had plenty of opportunity, apparently. We don't know. We'll find out more. He, okay, okay. This is unbelievable. We'll find out more, right? But right now, the story is he produced a firearm, so good enough. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Dead, 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 dead. So uh, there's uh, no end I, to the hypocrisy. I mean... Yes, you're you're absolutely right. The hypocrisy is there. We've been pointing it out every single day. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't point it out every single day. Um, but I'm personally done feeling angry at the hypocrisy because they know that they're being hypocritical. They're intentionally being hypocritical. They're intentionally applying a double standard. And we're trying to reason with people who think it's totally okay for, first of all, for police to do extrajudicial killings in this country without uh, allowing people to have their day in court, without allowing people to go through due process and the criminal justice system. They think it's totally fine, right? As long as it impacts specific groups of people. So there's that. And they're just not interested in fairness. They're not interested in equality. These are people who aren't interested in the facts. And so once you kind of accept that they're not honest actors, that they engage in these conversations and these debates with bad faith, well then I, it's not that the anger goes away, but it's just this understanding of why even bother reasoning with these people? Now it is important to point out the hypocrisy for everyone else because there's a great deal of misinformation, actually disinformation um, involving these protests. As we've given you uh, in previous Jesus. stories, we've given you statistics. Right wing extremism in this country is more of a threat when it comes to domestic terror. And we, we gotta keep giving people that information um, in order to combat the disinformation that we're hearing from the Trump administration and from other right wingers. Trump, by the way, also had seen the interview uh, on Vice and immediately tweeted after, why aren't the Portland police arresting the cold blooded killer of Aaron J. Danielson? Do your job and do it fast. Everybody knows who this thug is. No wonder Portland is going to hell. So to your point, Jenk, um, and by the way, he was obviously shortly killed by cops after that. Um, but I bring that up because it goes to your point, Jenk. Uh, we saw the type of defensive commentary Trump provided for Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, essentially talking about how he was defending his life. But when it comes to uh, someone on the left, someone who identifies with the protesters, well, he's a cold-blooded murderer, and uh, why why doesn't the FBI do its job and get him arrested immediately? So yeah. that's what we're dealing with. There's one more video, by the way, from his interview that I'd like to go to. So let's take a quick look at that. It was a free for all, and the police were letting it happen. Yeah. 
right after it happened, what did you, did you panic? Did you run? Well, honestly, you know, those are a bit of details I probably don't want to get into other than just simply saying that, you know, I realized what had happened. I was confident that I did not hit anyone innocent. And I made my exit. And, and just to reiterate, you, you feel that it was totally justified. Totally justified. Had I not acted, I am confident that my friend and I'm sure I would have been killed because I wasn't going to stand there and let something happen. What they've done is they're trying to make it look like we're all terrorists. And I mean, like, imagine thinking that this guy, like, bro, he's a conservative, okay? If especially he's a Trump supporter. He probably has guns, right? The, the, the guy that they killed, the guy that he murdered, right? So if he wanted to go and fucking kill protesters, he probably wouldn't have showed up with a fucking knife and a can of mace, okay? That's, like, who the fuck does that if you're a conservative? I'm pretty sure other conservatives would make fun of you if you were to do some cuck shit like that, right? And they're trying to make me look like a murderer. And look, the, the part of that video that I definitely agree with, and we've seen it in multiple cases, not just in Portland, is that... The police seem to allow some of this chaos to happen. Uh, we saw in the case of Kenosha, Wisconsin, the cops were uh, very friendly to the armed militia members who were there, including Kyle Rittenhouse. They uh, passed bottles of water to them, literally said, you could hear it in the video, we appreciate you guys, we really do. So I, I think that that- Yeah, the cops are probably gonna be more friendly towards townspeople that are showing up in a defensive manner than rioters that are setting the city of blaze past fucking 10 o'clock. Like, th like that. this is Kenosha is where the infamous fucking, um, this is where the infamous, wait, wait, this was Kenosha, right? Um, it, it, was it Kenosha or Seattle? where the, uh, the car dealership was on fire and the guy was like mostly peaceful protests. That might not have been, that might not have been in Kenosha. That might've been in, um, it might've been in Minneapolis. It was Kenosha? Fuck, give me, somebody give me the video so I can. Fiery, but mostly peaceful protest. This was just an insane. in front of CNN was ridiculed for a video caption Wednesday <laughs> night that read <laughs> this was just one of the most classic videos quote fiery but mostly peaceful protests after police Christine, Laura, what you're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha. Multiple! Wisconsin over the course. Destiny, listen to the actual reporting. It's non-objectionable. This caption is wild, dude. Of the night, a second night since Jacob Blake was seen shot in the back seven times by a police officer. And what you are seeing now, these images came and come in stark contrast to what we saw over the course of the daytime hours in Kenosha and into the early evening, which were largely peaceful demonstrations in the face of law enforcement. It wasn't until night fell that things began to get a little bit more contentious. Things were thrown back and forth. Police started using some of those crowd dispersal tactics like tear gas, even playing uh, very loud sounds to push them out and then what you are seeing the common theme that ties all of this together is an expression of anger and frustration over what 
Like, they could have just said mostly peaceful protests, and it would have been like, okay, maybe they're referring to, like, the totality of the protests were mostly peaceful. A little toned it, but fine. But when you have fiery but mostly peaceful protests, come on. That's too much a meme. Um, all right, let's see. What was their initial coverage of Jacob Blake? Oh, boy. Oh, wait, we're not even done with this yet. I'm sorry. So much more to go. Perspective is important and isn't um, portrayed uh, accurately enough in the way it's reported elsewhere. Um, but I also want to be fair and note that, you know, there are. I'm suspicious of Rynell's side of the story. Uh, and he oh, okay. has, as, as Jake alluded to earlier. Um, promoted the use of violence. Sometimes he would say, no, violence isn't the way, but other times he seemed to be more open to using violence as a way to combat, uh, you know, Trump-fueled fascism in the country. And so, and he has some stuff in his criminal record that makes me wonder. So we got to give you the full facts, um, you know. It is what it is. In a sense, you're right. Like I grew up naive. Uh, I thought the cops were good guys, uh, and partly because I was brainwashed by mainstream media. Every news report is. Uh, growing up, you watch local news. Um, black guys did something wrong. Uh, uh, cops are amazing heroes who shot black people. Uh, cops are always telling the truth. Always, always telling the truth. They're angels. They risk their lives for us. When uh, not really too. Old. I'm kind of curious, because, like, I know there's a lot of pro-cop media, but wasn't there a lot of, like, dirty cop media, too? I'm trying to think of, like, a totality of all the accounting. Uh, fuck. Like, could you count Could you count Rambo 1 as being, like, anti-cop, do you think? Because it was the cops that were, like, hunting him into the forest. It was the sheriff that was, like, a huge piece of shit. Um, training day is, like, a little bit more recent. I'm trying to think of stuff from, like, the 80s and 90s. Um... Like, I know there was, like, good cop shit. The Wire. Yeah, The Wire, true. Um, <clears throat> the hyper-recent... It's hyper-recent that the cop critical shit is, like, Training Day and The Shield and afterwards in the New World. The Shield is a really good anti-cop TV show. Robocop, true. is about the force torturing a cop instead of letting him die. Sure. Often, I mean, they just shoot at, at, at any threat at all. But that's not what we were told. We were told growing up, cops are the greatest things on earth, right? When So when you find out, it turns out, no, whether it's Kenosha, Wisconsin, or Portland, or New I'm just trying to think if I believe in that. Were we really told that? I grew up hating cops because of speeding tickets. <laughs> and I I don't know if we ever, I'm trying to, th I'm sure there are some communities that like worship cops, like my parents do. Rap music shit on cops all the time. I guess in school they told us cops were the good guys and friendly and shit. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I guess maybe it just depends on your... New York, where we're going to... 9-11 was like a lot of like worshipping for cops and firefighters, to be fair. Later in the show, uh, cops let a, uh, a guy who runs over protesters. They help him in the beginning. They help him afterwards, etc. It turns out, no, the, the culture of policing is every cop fascist. Of course not. Of course not, right? But is the culture of policing... Pro-fascism? Absolutely. In this country, unfortunately, it is. So when you realize that, not only now, but in retrospect, I didn't know all of our lives were in danger because the police aren't actually on the side of all the citizens. And I don't think 90%, 95% of this country realizes that. And so if you're a left-wing activist and you want to yell at me and say, Jake, you should have known earlier, okay, fair enough. But you have to understand, the people you know aren't the majority of the country. The overwhelming majority of the country has been brainwashed by the media into thinking that cops are angels that walk on earth here or maybe walk on clouds. And they always tell the truth and they're just totally neutral and just trying to protect you. When in reality, the history of policing in this country is beat up and assault and abuse and oftentimes kill minorities and oftentimes. always be against the left wing, crush the left wing in every turn. So they are right wing by their training and culture. So it shouldn't be. So now, when we see with our own eyes, because there's cameras everywhere, yeah, okay, now I'm freaked out. Because, I mean, if you have a fascist leader like Donald Trump and he gives them permission to start murdering uh, people in the streets, 
or covering up for the murders of people, or if a left winger ever does anything, including self defense, just shoot him dead. Who cares? Well, that's a scary place to live, man. It's a super yeah. scary place to live. And so that's where we are. Now, in terms of Trump, you know, we all know it. It's fascism defined. Oh, somebody had a skateboard? Self defense, kill anyone you like, as long as you're on my side. Oh, you're not on my side. Somebody was going to stab you or your friend? You monster terrorist. Cops, why haven't you murdered them yet? Get cops, get in there and murder them. This is US Marshals, they're federal forces. So there's a president telling them, you better go take that guy out. And, you know, shortly thereafter, they go and take the guy out. So that's how fascism works. Now, back to Reinhold. I want to be super clear about this. Here's quotes from him. He said, every revolution needs people that are willing and ready to fight. I'm 100% Antifa all the way. So he did say it. I'm willing to fight for my brothers and sisters, even if some of them are too ignorant to realize what Antifa truly stands for. Dude, my six-year-old came to me the other day and asked, Daddy, why do cops only shoot black people? Seems super balanced to me, Omao. What? We do not want violence, but we will not run from it either. So he says both sides, and I don't care if he calls himself Antifa. I'm not, I don't care about the label. I like this stupid media, like, oh, Antifa, oh my God, Antifa. Trump said they're terrorists, so I, I'm gonna treat them as terrorists. No, you're an idiot if you think that. In this case, though, you see what happened. He said- <laughs> That's true, Cenk sounds like GTA radio. <laughs> that, that's kind of true, yeah. If the police continue to pick on and beat up innocent citizens that are peacefully voicing their objections, it must be met with equal force. Don't do that. No, you're not going to meet it with equal force. You're going to potentially kill someone, and then you're almost certainly going to get killed. It's a really dumb idea has happened here. He says, we truly have an opportunity right now to fix everything. I feel like there's a fair amount of movies with cops doing what's necessary to stop the bad guys. I, we, I wish I had just like... I feel like anytime that happens, I feel like that's usually like a rogue cop, no? Like if you think like rush hour and stuff, that it's like when the cops are doing what they need to do to stop the bad guy, it's usually a cop that's like, the department doesn't have my back. I need to go and do this on my own. I'm turning in my badge. I'm gonna go get him on my own. Like, isn't that like the, the stereotype of those movies? It will be fight like no other. It will be war and like all wars, there will be casualties. So that was, that is wrong guys. Do not do that. Do not bring guns yeah. to things. Don't think that you're gonna outforce them. That's an idiotic way of thinking. And so, it, look, MLK and Gandhi <laughs> did nonviolence and it worked. And, and it wasn't just because they were giants in, in more, as moral figures. It was also because they were smart and knew that they were out, outgunned. There was no way in the world Gandhi was gonna outgun the British Empire. And he knew that and he said that. Same thing with King. So if you think that a couple of left wing guys are going to outgun the entire police in this country, you're an idiot. No, civil disobedience works. That requires even more courage. That's Thanks true. for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Turn based. Okay. In Wisconsin. Here we go. Cops in Wisconsin shot a black man several times in the back as he calmly walked into his own vehicle, his three children <laughs> were in the car as he was shot in close range. Uh, the witnesses who were there uh, before the police were called uh, to the scene said that uh, Jacob Blake, that was the victim here, had broken up a fight uh, between two women in the neighborhood. And even though it's unclear what happened immediately before the video we see, um, what is absolutely clear is that Blake did not pose any type of imminent threat to the cops. In fact, uh, the video that we're about to show you as graphic as it is, makes it very obvious uh, that he was not the aggressor. The cop who shot him several times in the back was. Again, it's graphic, warning, um, let's take a look. To be fair, the video does look bad, but to be fairer, this is why I always say, wait for the full video, guys. The, this video being released and covered like it was, um, like how the Young Turks are covering it, this is the reason why Kenosha burned, and it's the reason why two people were killed when a person was shot by Kyle Rittenhouse. You can draw a direct line straight from A, you're not even going from A to B, you're going from like A to like A.5, like in between, you don't even have to go that far. Like it is the reason why those riots happen, and it is the reason why Rittenhouse ended up shooting and killing, why two people ended up dying that night. 
I don't know how it's possible for someone to survive getting shot several times in close range like that. Uh, but he is still alive, although he's in critical condition. The man who was shot identified. Explain the full context. So the full context was this guy, um, I believe he'd shown up and I think he was in the process of assaulting his ex-girlfriend that he had already been charged and I think convicted for raping in the past. I think finger raped her or whatever in the past. I think the cops were called to figure out this altercation. When they showed up, they tried to pull him off or get him away. As they were in the process of that, they tased him twice. They tried to wrestle him to the ground. He wouldn't go. He was going to the car where he had their children in the back of the car and he was gonna drive away and leave with those children. And eventually they shot him as he got into the car before he could get away. By Governor Tony Evers as Jacob Blake was airlifted to a Milwaukee hospital and is in serious condition. At least half a dozen witnesses said that Blake had tried to break up a fight between the two women outside a home and that police had attempted to use a taser on the man prior to the shooting. Then they heard at least seven gunshots ring out. Uh, it's, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even. Wait, hold on, I'm so sorry. You can't do A to B, even if this was bullshit. You're forgetting that riots happen as a boiling point of a series of racial tension events, even though those other events are BS or no, 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 no. The riots that happened in Kenosha happened because of this Jacob Blake thing, like full stop. Jacob Blake happened in Kenosha. The riots were in Kenosha and they were in response to this event, full stop. It's not because the tensions were at a boiling point. Sure, they were, but it was because of this thing. I don't even know what to say. I. The thing that drives me crazy about these stories, other than the just how cruel and hideous and awful it is, is the inevitable feedback that we hear from right wingers on social media. Well, why was he ignoring the police? Oh, Is that a death sentence? Is that all it takes? The mm -hmm. cops are not supposed to open fire unless their lives are in danger, okay? And honestly, in this day and age, does anyone really question why a black person would be afraid of the police and maybe would want to walk away or run away from them. So a lot of people, you know, are shocked. Those of us that grew up in black and brown communities. Um, I grew up in a community that was half and half, black and Latin in Miami, um, you know, Liberty City. This is Monday, you know, this is, it, since George Floyd's death, since all of these marches, there has been no decrease in the numbers of people being murdered by these race soldiers. And, and the reason I call them race soldiers, because the truth of it is, is that law enforcement has been infiltrated by these white supremacists. And you you you, you can't say things because if you are, you're, you can be falsely accusing somebody and you don't have statistics. We don't need statistics to know that the behavior that are being carried out by some law enforcement uh, officers is is identical to the behavior that they have during slavery, during Jim Crow. And so the dehumanization of black lives, you know, people say that when I come here, I try to sweep everybody under the rug and I say people of color. No, I'm very specific when it comes to black people because when I talk about black people, I'm talking about my daughter and my son, who when my son walks down the street, nobody knows that his grandmother, one of his grandmothers is from Puerto Rico and the other one is a descendant of an American slave. So when I talk about black people, I'm very specific. And that the fact that they have targets on their backs in this country, we have targets on our backs in this country. And you watch this kind of stuff, it's like, I don't, at this point, I'm like, I, it's appalling. It is horrible. We need Jacob to live because we need to give a face and a voice to these people because unfortunately- We, we need to give a face and a voice to these people. Notice how they try to turn everybody into a martyr, right? Like Christ, dude, we got, we need to, like, this is, it was gonna be like a rapist. That's who you guys wanted to go? You guys wanted to go with a rapist for the face of this? Notice how once the rest of the record came out, everybody like, uh, okay. We have to speak for George Floyd. We have to speak for Breonna Taylor. So we need him to be alive at all costs. And I hope that black people in Wisconsin are are surrounding that house. I also, it also sucks too, to lump like Breonna Taylor into this because Breonna Taylor's case from everything that I've seen was tragic. That woman died for no reason. The cops were either kind of out of line or totally out of line with even serving the warrant. The cops were totally out of line with firing into the apartment from outside. The Breonna Taylor thing was fucked in 50 different ways. I'm glad the dude got a massive payout. Um, well, not. I hope some of it went to her 
family. That was insane. Um, to, to lump that in with Jacob Blake, the rapist, and George Floyd, like, is so fucking stupid and appalling. Hospital and making sure that that man lives because he needs to be watched at all costs. Now, I'm going off the cuff here because we just don't trust law enforcement at this point. So the fact that three little babies were in that car, just like Philando Castillo's daughter was in that car when he was murdered, it's just Monday. So for us to sit here and act like we are just shocked about what they've been, what they're doing that they- The kids he was trying to abduct, by the way. <laughs> they doing forever. I want to know what we going to do because they not coming to save us. They don't care about us and they surely don't care about black men and black women in this country. You know, the Philando Castile uh, story, there was no justice in that story. No. Uh, the cop was acquitted in that in that case and we had video. We had video of what happened. We had video of Philando Castile making it clear that he had a licensed gun in the vehicle. He was complying, he wasn't doing anything wrong. And that gun, that cop shot that gun and, and murdered him anyway, right? With this story, with Jacob Blake. I don't see the issue with using George Floyd as well. He was unfairly killed at the end of the day. George Floyd was unfairly killed. There was no justification for it. Um, but like at the very least, he was like committing a crime when like cops showed up and shit. I'm just saying to put that in the same case as like Breonna Taylor, Breonna Taylor wasn't doing anything wrong. Um, she, her ex-boyfriend was like a fucky dude, but she wasn't committing a crime. She wasn't doing anything. And she got killed on some insane shit. George Floyd was tragic too. He shouldn't have died either. But I just don't like lumping all these people in together when some of these cases, um, the Philando Castile was also one where I don't believe, I don't even know why he got pulled over. But again, he announced he had a gun. I don't know why the cop fired into that car. I don't think we ever got a good answer from that. I don't know if the cop was ever even charged with anything. It sounded like he got off from everything. Um, like, yeah. This particular police department doesn't require their cops to wear body cams. So we may never know what happened before. The cop literally said he was scared. It's worse than that. I think, didn't the cop just say that he, he thought he smelled weed? <laughs> was shot in the back in close range. I mean, I feel like we already have uh, quite a bit of evidence to show that what the cop did was excessive force. He was not posing an imminent threat. And by the way, I mean, if you're at a, in a scene like that as a black man and you have your babies in the car, I mean, any person, any human being, you want to protect your kids, which is why I think he was calmly walking to his car and trying to get to his kids. Oh, yeah. But anyway, I also. Yeah, go ahead, Ida. I'm sorry. They also assumed that because a black man was on the scene that he was automatically guilty. He was there breaking up a fight, breaking up a fight probably trying to keep the police to come from there, separating two other people from fighting because we know what the consequences are. And they show up and immediately try to taser him and arrest him without knowing what's going on. And that's what they do all the time. This, this is not an exception, this is the rule. So we tired, we don't wanna hear this bull anymore. We don't wanna have, the, you got Black Lives Matter signs on your windows cause you don't want your windows broken, you donating to organizations. We need white people to put their privilege on the line and to save black lives because that's where we are right now. We don't need to hear any more rhetoric. We don't need to hear no songs. We don't hear, need to hear no speeches and no more, no more Zooms. If you really wanna make a change with this and we need to defund the police and we need to clean it, gut it out, then, it, then put your privilege on the line so that our people can live because that's what's happening right now. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it.